Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to take a little time to talk about p-value. So we've been doing a lot of different uh, COVID-19 related studies and talking about those studies and something that comes up in, you know, pretty much every single study we talk about are p-values. And we go through, you know, what makes statistical significance, what level p-value, etc. But I think understanding what a p-value is could be helpful in terms of interpreting those studies. And I think, you know, p-values, although they are complex, can be somewhat easy to understand. And by doing so, um, it lends a little extra extra credence to reading through these studies, understanding exactly what that p-value means. So to do that, um, I just wanted to rewind a little bit and talk about, you know, studies in general. So why do a study, right? So a study looks for the effects between at least two different groups that have a different intervention. Sometimes that's a medication, sometimes that's a risk factor, sometimes that's a disease. There's lots of different setups, and we're going to talk about study designs in a future video. Um, but for the sake of p-values, look at two different groups with different intervention. You know, for instance, this could be, i.e., does drug A decrease mortality? That could be your study question. And to achieve oh, mortality, and to achieve that study question, you would need right two groups. You would need a group one that did not have drug A, and a group two that got drug A, right? And you'd have to compare group one that didn't get drug A to group two that did get drug A and look at mortality between the two groups. So when it comes to p-values, the p-value is a marker of statistical significance between two groups. And at its kind of statistical purity, um, they talk about it in terms of hypotheses. So with this study question, right, you have two hypotheses. One is termed the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is that there is no real difference between groups one and groups two. So between one and two. And then you have the alternate hypothesis. And the alternate hypothesis is the exact opposite of that, right? And that's there is a real difference between group one and group two. And these are your two hypotheses for any you know question. One hypothesis is that there's no difference, and the other hypothesis is there is a difference. The reason I'm talking about this is because the p-value is a marker of the null hypothesis, and this will make more sense in a, in a second here. But with this study question, does drug A decrease mortality, we have our two groups. Now let's say at the end of the study, group one, right, this was the group that did not get drug A has an 8% mortality. And then group two that did get drug A has a 6% mortality. The question here is, is drug A responsible for that decreased mortality or is this just random chance, right? Is it just randomly group two has a somewhat smaller mortality than group one? You know, if you ran this study on 100 different patients and you did that, a hundred times using a hundred different patients each time, you would have slightly different mortalities in each group, and that's just a random chance. So is this decrease in mortality, this 2% decrease between group one and group two, because group two got drug A, or is it just a random chance? And that's what the p-value tells you. It tells you, is this difference because of drug A? So the null hypothesis comes in because the p-value tells you the percent chance, that's a percentage sign, percent chance that the null hypothesis is true and that this difference is just simply chance. So what does this look like? So let's say 
for this study comparing you know these two groups and group two got drug A let's say they compare these two groups and the p-value was 0 0.08 what this actually means is that there's an eight percent chance that this difference is random aka that the null hypothesis is true Does that make sense? So this is an actual, the p-value is an actual percentage, right? So 0 0.08, so it's times 100, 8% chance that the null hypothesis being that there's no real difference between these two groups is true, and that the difference we're seeing is just random chance. It's not because of drug A. You could say this for any p-value, right? So a p-value of point, you know, zero, I shouldn't have done a zero, let's do something higher. A p-value of point, you know, three four. That means there's a 34% chance that the null hypothesis, being that there's no difference between the two groups, is true, and that this difference is random chance, and it's not because of drug A, right? P-value of point zero one means there's a 1% chance that the null hypothesis is true, and that this difference is random, and it's not because of drug A. So you might ask then, why? do we choose a p-value of less than 0 0.05 to mean statistical significance? Well, it's a great question. And honestly, I, I, statisticians, I'm sure, will have more to say on this than I do. But it's just a line we drew in the sand. And we just said, you know, we're going to say that if there's a 5% chance, right, because 0 0.05 is a 5% chance or less, that the null hypothesis is true and that this is just due to random chance, we're going to say that that is statistical significance, that the difference is real. But with this in mind, it's important to pay attention to what the p-value is because the lower the p-value, right? So if you have a p-value of 0 0.05 versus a p-value of 0 0.001, oop, I don't know why that did that, of 0 0.001, this p-value means there's a 5% chance that the difference between the two groups is just random, whereas this p-value means there's a 0.1% chance. So this is a more powerful statement than this. All right. So we draw a line in the sand and we say that anything less than 0 0.05 is statistically significant, but the lower the p-value, the more robust that finding is. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Let us know what questions you have in the comments below. I just wanted to put out a quick video because we've been talking so much about p-values and hopefully this provides you a little more context and helps you understand these studies a little better than me just uh, blabbering on about p-values in the middle of the video. All right, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, follow along if you feel inclined, and we'll see you all next time.